Hey everybody, look at me, I'm Joe Chabot. Yeah, my name is Joe Chabot. I just want to let you guys know I'm Joe Chabot. Wait, remember, Joe Chabot. I'm Andrew. No. That's too good. Andrew Rogers, really looking forward to working with you. You as well. So what we just saw were three introductions. Two very bad, one good. Now our presentation isn't on introductions today. We thought Ricky and Greg did a very nice job of giving you guys an introduction presentation a couple weeks ago. But our presentation is on business cards. And a business card is in fact an extension of your introduction. It's our way of saying it is it's a photograph of you and your business in someone's wallet at all times after you meet them. So what we're going to go over are what makes a good business card. And we've divided it down into three key elements that we believe make the best business cards. The first is aesthetics. What does your card look like? What is it saying about you? Is it a tie-dye card that makes you look like you sell Grateful Dead tickets? Or is it you know, something clean and professional? Second, information. What's your card saying? what's important for it to say, and what do you not include on your card. Third, and finally, personality. Because, let's face it, the card is you. This is the reason you gave it to them in the first place. It's going to make them choose between you and the competitor, so it needs to represent everything about you and your business and how you conduct business. Aesthetics. First thing that people see when they look at your card is what your card looks like. It seems like a no-brainer, but you need to think about how your card is actually portraying who you are. So, that being said, we're going to look at this example here of a business card that Joe and I thought was really great aesthetically. Um, I'm going to break it down, and I want you to, to realize that each different piece, um, you need to think about when you're crafting yours, each different piece, and how it relates to you. First, I'm going to look at the logo. Now, it's important to realize that you're a college student, and you probably don't have a logo yet. In this case, don't use one. It's silly. Um, and please, don't use a clip art. That's just worse. Uh, but if you have a professional logo for your business, feel free to use it. Uh, it's an association that people are going to make uh, with you, your business, and you know something that makes them remember this. But make sure it's distinct. Secondly, if you're going to use a picture, an image, something on your card itself to grab attention. Make sure that you know it's it's catching, but also appropriate. I'm not catching him. Uh, make sure that you know it's something related to either what you do or to your logo. This guy ties in the logo really well with his his graphic, um, and it it does. It really catches your eye because when you see the card, you're like, wow, a little kid with a sword. That's unique. That's cool. Next, you're going to want to think about the colors that you use. Please don't use 18 different colors. A, because I can only see four because I'm colorblind. And B, because it's really, really distracting. Uh, if you're trying to find information and there's 18 different colors on a card, you're going to have to search through and, I mean, my eyes get confused, your eyes will probably get confused too. That being said, the biggest tip that we can give you um, is, you know, keep it clean. If you keep your card with you know, space in between, um, and we'll show you here on this card, spaces in between where you can see everything. There's enough space on the back of the card where you can see uh, the logo and, and the tagline. And then there's space between here uh, and here so that the name is marked off, the company is marked off, and then each different piece of information has its own space. It's not crammed on top of each other. And also notice that <laughs> There are no words over top of logos or image. If you put words on top of a logo or an image, you run the risk of people not being able to read it as well. Uh, you want your information to be able to be seen. This being said, keep it simple, stupid. You all heard it. I'm not insulting your intelligence, but the simpler your card is, the better chance you're going to have that people are going to be able to understand all the different pieces of information that are on your card. Next, material. Now, a lot of people, you know, you, you see, you see on, on websites and blogs and whatever, you know, these crazy, ridiculous cards. If you use something like this rubber band, I mean, it's cool and all. Yeah, your business card is a rubber band that you have to stretch out to read, but your business card is a rubber band that you have to stretch out to read. 
if you have to use two hands to stretch out your card, how are you going to dial the number at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> Practicality is key. <clears throat> the thickness of your card, if you're using paper, is also very important in, uh, you know, pulling across the point that you're a professional. If you hand somebody a flimsy piece of paper that kind of flaps in the breeze, less good. I don't, I mean, it's kind of like saying, here, please throw this away for me. No, you want something that's going to be durable, it's going to last, that they're going to be able to keep uh, so that they can reference your information uh, as quickly as they need it. Next, size and shape. This is important uh, because, yes, you can set yourself apart by using a weird size or a weird shape, but if your business card is a very big circle, I mean, I don't know where I'm going to put that. <laughs> Like, most people keep their business cards all together in a book, a binder, a drawer, whatever, what have you. But if you have a big circle business card and it doesn't fit with their other ones, my guess is it's going to go in, you know, a fitting circular filing. <laughs> <laughs> Great meeting, man. I'm really looking forward to working with you. Um, here's my business card. Thank you. Oh, wait, who? Uh, I hate that. I don't even know who this guy is. All I got was a phone number. It's important on your business card. While there's something to be said for being a minimalist, don't hand someone just a phone number. They might think they're calling the next Manson family. <laughs> <laughs> so, who was that? Information. Keep it tight, but don't skimp on it. I mean, you're not going to save a half a cent on ink if you just give someone your phone number. So make sure there's at least the name and phone number. At least. That being said, the flip side of that coin is too much information, or TMI is all our parents hate to hear in our text lingo. Too much information is an instant deal breaker. If your card is half text, then no one's going to want to weave their way through it to find crucial information, such as this one. That looks like an essay to me. I'm not going to weave through that and find the phone number. By the time it's done, I don't even remember why I was reading it in the first place. So please, keep your information simple. Don't cover your entire card in text. So here we have a business card that Andrew and myself picked out. We believe it's got the key elements to good information, as well as some good aesthetics, but we already talked about that. So the first thing we're going to say, the first and foremost, number one important thing on your business card, the name. Your name, your company's name. It's why you gave them the card in the first place. So if you're Ricky Crowdinger and you sell boomerangs, Ricky Crowdinger, Boomerang Incorporated. These people right here, name, business name. It's important, it's the only reason you're giving them your card. Second thing is what you do. If your company name doesn't already give away what you do, such as Annie's Bakery, okay, if it's Annie's Bakery, don't subtitle it, we bake stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> such as here, they have media. Okay, you know they do media? Now you know who that person was, why you're going to call them, and you're not confused sitting there trying to remember what you called them for in the first place. So have what you do on there. And it's important to stay with that if you have a specific title at your job, such as Professor Bremberg, King's College. If I get a random King's College card and I don't know who Brian Bremberg is, I don't know if I want to send my kid there, but if I know he's an economics and business professor, okay, now I know what to call this guy if I want that. So you want to make sure your title's on there as well if you have one. Third thing, but probably the second most important thing, is your contact info, because once they have the name, they need to know how to contact you in the best way possible. You want to make it easy for this person to work with you. So our stipulations are two minimum points of contact. Primary, whether it be phone or email, some people check email more than phone, so it doesn't really matter, but have your primary on the top, your secondary right underneath. So you can do two phone numbers, an email and a phone number, your phone fax, just whatever way makes it easy for the person you're working with to contact you. Um, that being said, you don't have to put just two. Some people need an address for mail and need a fax number. So you can put all those in there if you need it. Just you know, keep it concise. And tagline. We saw it on the card up there, and we already mentioned the same along the same lines of the logo. We don't really have taglines as students, but if you work for a company that has a tagline, such as Subway, Eat Fresh, it's important that you have Eat Fresh on your card because it's associated with the personality of the company. So, like, I got a tagline, Andrew is awesome, right? No. no. <laughs> Personality. This is another important thing, and as we've been talking about all throughout this presentation, your personality needs to be on your card. 
is a representation of you in somebody's wallet, in somebody's pocket, in somebody's desk drawer. And if your personality doesn't come through, it's not as memorable. It's not what you want it to be. Take, for exa uh, example, this card. This card. Okay, what does this say to you? <laughs> this guy's probably tagging stuff. Is that what you want to have, you know, being your representation on your business card? Maybe, it depends on what you do. But probably you don't want to have, like, your name, student at the King's College, cut at the dotted line and spread. It represents you. Keep that in mind. Make sure that, that your card parallels, you know, your personality and what you do. And, and when you're making your card, ask, what does my card say about me? Uh, and along those lines, we want to talk about business card holders because as an, ex uh, like an extension of your introduction, you need to make sure that your card is crisp and clean and ready to go. You don't want to be carrying around cards in your pocket <coughs> they're just being crinkled up. I mean, if you hand somebody a crinkled card, it's like, cool, you're professional. No. Anyways, um, but uh, this has been our presentation, and uh, speaking of handing out cards, we're going to hand out some handouts with our major points and a few resources for you. So, if you have any questions, have. Uh, you said don't use logos. What about uh, the logo for the college? Um, it depends. If you, if you want to, if you're marketing yourself as a student for the college, then you can use the logo. But we just want to be careful that the main thing about the logo is don't go creating a logo for something that doesn't exist. Don't pull off the part. I mean, if you want to go into media, don't like throw a bunch of paintbrush pictures on there just because you, you like art. Uh, it's just stick to a logo that's legit. Let me qualify that that statement. Um, before you, you make a business card with the King's College logo, you probably want to check with student services because there may be some copyright issues and trademark issues or whatever with that. So um, there there are you can't use like even a house crest yep. or any type of brand. Yeah, that yeah. So when I say there may be, I, my what I mean is there probably are issues actually. So in, in terms of the appropriateness of that logo, yes, it would be appropriate given that you are a student at King's College. But in terms of the legality of that logo, <laughs> I would say the answer is you probably can use it. But <coughs> you. This isn't specifically on topic for what you spoke about today, but I'm just wondering if you came across any business card etiquette while you were researching this topic. Um, I'm just wondering if there's um, guidelines on when it's when it's a good time to exchange business cards during an introduction or conversation, um, how that exchange happens, like when a good time to put away the business card is, things like that. I'm just wondering if you came across I actually did roll, did you roll across anything? I just said, you know, Andrew's words of wisdom. Uh, but if you want to I, I did actually roll across an article that was talking about business card etiquette. And the article actually took an interesting take. It said, you know, the standard present your card at the end of the business conversation, of any interaction, it's a contact. But it also mentioned there could be wisdom in withholding a card, depending on the position you're in. If you're looking to do business with someone, if you're in a salesman position and there's a purchaser, it could be it could be interesting to withhold a card and set, and request a business card instead, and write your information on their card. That forces them to contact you. So it, it's really you got to gauge it based on the situation. But there can be wisdom in full withholding your business card at the at a moment, and then when they contact you, send them in the mail your business card, pamphlet, the information, whatever it is you do. So it depends on your situation, but it definitely so it varies where you want to hand it out. You don't.